Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History for an episode in our little series That Dress. This time we're going to be discussing and analysing Givenchy's famous monkey dress that he created exclusively for the Duchess of Windsor, the artist formerly known as Wallace Simpson. I was inspired to do this episode because this morning I was cleaning this. My monkey bowl. I love it above all things. It dates from, I think, the mid 20th century, maybe the 1960s, as late as that. I'm not sure. It belonged to my father for years and he left it to me in his will. Hang on, you're saying, Amanda, your dad's not dead. You're right, he's not. Hi, Dad. Why did I get this bowl before he died because he could stand no more of my begging to have it, my whining to have it. And so he finally said, just take it. And I love it. As you can see, we put fairy lights in it so that it lights up at night. And there's a close up. Look at their lovely little faces. Of course, the monkeys both have names. And at Christmas, we fill it with ornaments and it really adds a lovely little Christmassy centerpiece on our credenza there. I thought when I did Planet of the Apes, that would be the last time I'd be discussing monkeys in the ultimate fashion history. But here goes. So, as I said, as I was dusting the monkey bowl, I was reminded of Givenchy's fabulous monkey dress that he created for Wallace Simpson. I thought, oh, this will be a quick and easy one to do for an episode of that dress. Little did I know the wormhole of research that I was dragged into for this one. This dress is a real fashion history mystery and I had to solve it. It was like an episode of CSI in here today. So little is known about this dress. There is only one photograph of Wallace wearing it. She donated the dress to the Maryland Heritage Society. It comes from 1954. This is when it was commissioned and created for her and when this photograph was taken. It's made of organza with wool monkeys embroidered all over the skirt along with some beautiful swirling vine leaves. Wallace wore it with a satin ribbon tied around her waist in lieu of a belt. And of course, it's called the monkey dress because of those monkeys. There are hardly any pictures of this dress out there. Hardly any with a good resolution. These are the best I could find. So let me lighten this monkey up a bit and put a dark background behind him so you can make him out. Monkeys playing musical instruments. This is hilarious and it's so much fun. But what do we know about this dress? Why? Why this dress? Why monkeys? Let's try to come up with some theories. Well, first of all, we know that Wallace wasn't shy when it came to wearing animals on gowns. Of course, she's known for the Scaparelli lobster dress with that wonderful lobster painted by Scap's pal, Salvador Dali. And here is a picture of Wallace wearing the lobster dress and looking quite lovely and elegant. I have no idea why everyone always says she was plain. I think she was a beautiful, elegant lady. As I have already mentioned, the gown was created by Hubert de Givenchy exclusively for Wallace Simpson. This was a couture piece and it was exclusively for her, meaning that it didn't come from one of his collections. She obviously approached him with an idea for a dress and they worked on it together. So who came up with the monkeys? There's something very strange about this because monkeys were not one of the popular motifs used in fashion in the 1950s. You know how I often talk about cultural hotspots? Well, in the 50s, the cultural hotspots were Paris and of course, Polynesia and Indonesia, those sort of exotic bally high climbs. So if the skirt had been embroidered with palm trees or tiki masks or Thai dancers, I'd get it. But monkeys, why monkeys? It's not the right time period for a monkey motif. 
The 1930s, in my opinion, would have been the era when monkeys were a popular motif. And it took me about 24 seconds on Google to find this from the 1930s, this fabulous knit dress with the tightrope walking monkeys. Now, the 1930s was full of very whimsical, fun, cheeky motifs, all of which were used as an escape from the Great Depression. But I also think that the obsession with Africa in the 1930s was part of the interest in monkeys in regards to fashion. This was the era of Osa Johnson and her safaris and explorations into Africa. And of course, she had her own fashion line. And this is a monkey brooch from the 30s from Osa Johnson's line. So I was getting more and more confused. And I thought, well, who came up with the idea of monkeys? Was it Givenchy? Or was it Wallace? I had to find out. And so I went running to my bookcase and pulled out one of my favorite books. This one, my massive three volume catalog of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor's Sotheby's auction, when all of their stuff was sold off, or so it seemed. These are gorgeous books in their own right and contain beautiful, clear images of everything that they owned all of Wallace Simpson's handbags and shoes and clothes and their homeware and their dinner services and the Duke's neckties. So I sat down and started going through these catalogues in search of monkeys. I had a little bit of help from my research assistant. There he is. And I did find monkeys, like these monkey candle holders here. These monkeys. This monkey here, which I love, and I think it's quite a bit like my monkey. But then I found these gold monkeys playing musical instruments. What are the monkeys on Wallace's skirt doing? They're playing musical instruments. So I think the idea of the monkeys came from Wallace. I am pretty convinced of this. If you know otherwise, let me know. Well, just because the Duke and Duchess of Windsor had a few monkey ornaments, that wasn't enough to convince me that this is why she chose monkeys for her dress. I think there was more to it than that. And so back down the research wormhole I went and I found out that there were no less than three quite important papers, academic research papers, on simian behavior that were published in 1954. Now, I'm not suggesting that Wallace read these, but the kind of circle she traveled in, she would have mixed with people who may have read these papers. Cocktail conversation. 1954, Picasso did this, woman with a monkey. Just a couple of years before Matisse had done his woman with monkey. And so I'm getting this sort of feeling that perhaps in around 1953, 1954, monkeys were a hot topic. Fashion is not an island. It's a response, right? And then I wondered if there was anything specific going on in the world in 1954 that might have influenced the Duchess of Windsor's choice to wear a monkey dress and then oh duh just a few months before in 1953 it was queen elizabeth ii's coronation queen elizabeth of course was the duke of windsor's niece and the duke and the duchess were banned from attending the coronation they weren't officially banned there was no statement from the palace, but we all know they were banned from attending. And I think that Wallace choosing monkeys, so playful, so much fun for this beautiful gown, it was sort of like putting her finger up at the English royal family, at the British establishment, and sort of saying, you can keep your pomp your formality, your circumstance. We don't need it. We wouldn't be a member of a club who would have us. And I think the fact that she chose to wear the monkey gown for this formal publicity portrait really is sending out that message. The Windsors were fine. They were having fun. Look, they can wear monkeys on their gowns. I think it really was a bit of a message 
to the British establishment. And I do think it's kind of funny that Givenchy, the label, now has the Monkey Brothers motif. A little bit different to Wallace's dress, but still, Givenchy monkeying around again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode on the ultimate fashion history. You can contact me and learn more about me through my website, amandahalle.com, or just drop me a line through Facebook. And while you're over there, join our Facebook group. We always have lots of fun. Check out our books at Dean Street Press. I'll be back very soon with new episodes on the ultimate fashion history. Hopefully not about monkeys next time. So just click that little circle to subscribe. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.